We began to get strapped in with the help of our, uh, our strap end crew. Here's Pam getting strapped in. Not sure of how much of the uh, launch audio we will hear, but uh, if we can bring up that audio, perhaps. Three to hundred. One. No, two, one, and two. Auto, auto. Broadway, three at 104. Looking for the roll. There it is. International science. Discovery has cleared the tower. Discovery, roll program. Over the right. Watch the separation here. This happens at about Mach 5, at about 150,000 feet. Yes, ma'am. Question 50. 103, 103. And then we continued on. Uh, the main engines went for about eight and a half minutes till we achieved our orbital velocity uh, about uh, 17,500 miles an hour. And we separated from our tank, ET-120. And this was a, uh, a tank that had uh, been mounted on as part of another mission and had gotten some rework. And this was a, a very, very clean, wonderful tank that uh, served us well up into orbit. And then we opened up our payload bay doors and we started to go to work. And on the second day, we begin our vehicle inspection of the uh, vehicle. We do uh, using the robotic arm uh, grappled to the orbiter boom sensor system. This is an accelerated graphic, but it shows you that we inspect both wings and the nose cap using the sensors that are at the boom tip, and we downlink the data to the ground for analysis. And uh, during the maneuvers, the arm camera came overhead, the uh, overhead windows, and so we took an opportunity to wave to our friends in mission control. Flight Day 3 is really a sprint, a uh, very dynamic day involved with a rendezvous and docking with the space station. You can see the shuttle here is seen from the station kicking off a TI burn about 48,000 feet away. And we're using lots and lots of different sensors as well as laptop uh, situational uh, displays and also an alignment site that Pam used to line the two spacecraft as we got closer to the station. About uh, 600 feet below the International Space Station, we did a backflip which essentially enabled the space station crew to use their telephoto lenses to uh, map our tile system to make sure that it was safe for us to come home. And thankfully, because of ET-120, had a clean bill of health. And uh, um, you can see it's just a beautiful view. And then Pam took over on that flight deck. This is pretty exciting uh, for a pilot to be bringing two large vehicles together like this. Uh, the station is huge out the window. It's absolutely enormous. This is my third trip there, and it's just amazing how much it's grown. Uh, fortunately, uh, we are actually just using a camera system mounted in the shuttle, pointed at a target on the station, and so I'm flying visually. I'd like to bring you on board for the moment of docking, if we can bring the audio up a little. Morning, please. Houston, Discovery and Apple capture confirmed. And ISS is in free drift. Houston copies. You can hear the ship's bell. Discovery arriving. <laughs> Based on naval ship tradition, the space station has a ship's bell, which is rung when we arrive and depart. This is a very emotional moment. We had not seen Clay Anderson in five months, and and Peggy and Yuri in a while either, and so there's a lot of hugging and kissing that goes on when you get inside, but unfortunately you don't have a lot of time. On our first fourth day, we began our preparations for our first spacewalk, and uh, Scott and Doug were the uh, ones to go outside on this day. Uh, Paolo was the uh, spacewalk coordinator with assistance from uh, Peggy and Yuri on the space station, helping to get Doug and Scott uh, suited up uh, into their suits and ready to go. We also had robotic preparations. We had to hand over the orbiter boom sensor system between the two arms and uh, position the station arm to be ready to uh, meet Scott and Doug as they were coming out of the airlock. And uh, they egress and uh, take their first look down at Earth, which is a beautiful view. Uh, Doug rode on the arm with the S-band antenna that we took from the space station and stowed in the payload bay. This is a view inside uh, the laboratory module with uh, Dan and I, uh, working with the uh, Node 2 Harmony module. Uh, Dan was the operator on this day. He grappled the uh, station robotic arm to Node 2, and uh, we unberthed it from the payload bay. Through a series of robotic maneuvers, uh, we were able to uh, pre-position it and uh, temporarily install it on the port side of Node 1. And uh, the arm is a dream to fly. It's very easy to control. Uh, it's very nice to do the flying uh, for that activity. 
and we were uh, very excited to do that. In the top view, you see uh, preparations for our second major milestone, the relocation of the P6 solar array. This is a view from Scott's uh, helmet camera as he's demating the uh, fluid connectors in preparation for that relocation. A couple hours uh, after the note was attached to the station, we checked uh, for some contamination inside. Everything looked uh, fairly clear, and so we, we went in there. We have a uh, a mask and uh, goggles, looks like we're robbing a bank more than entering a node. But eventually everything was clear, so we started uh, uh, removing all the launch restraint. And of course, uh, next day out again for another EVA, this time to outfitting the outside of the node. You see a lot of handrails there. And also working on the um, uh, P6 solar array, Pamina inside uh, coordinated spacewalk and outside Scott and then uh, here removing some of the connectors. And here is Scott opening the claw that keeps the P6 attached to station. Uh, the, from inside the station, they can move the, arm, uh, the P6 away, and they have no direct view. So the, the EVA people, and you see the helmet uh, camera view there, have to direct them and tell them how to move uh, the, the P6. You see it moving there very fast. We don't move it so fast. Uh, it looks like a bus, actually. It's a, as big as a bus. Uh, we had also a, 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 a one thing coming up. We sent uh, Dan to a solar array rotary joint to check out some, some things that was not working properly, and they found some contamination there, uh, something that was unexpected. I closed everything back to the node and continued with uh, outfitting uh, the uh, part that is used for grappling the arm. And uh, here we go for another VA. Once we got the node uh, attached and outfitted, uh, Scott and I went outside for EVA 3, which was to attach this big, you see it looks like a big bus with the solar arrays folded at the end there. Uh, Stephanie and Dan worked the robotic arm to get it all the way out to the end of the port wing. Scott and I made our way out uh, to the four corners and then ground guided it in as, as Dan and Stephanie guided it into the P5 truss. Uh, you could see the, the uh, alignment there, and then Scott and I, that's Scott's helmet camera, I believe, there, as we're looking at the alignment, and we fastened all four bolts in the four corners. This is a neat picture from uh, Scott's helmet camera. You can see the curvature of the earth, and you can see Discovery docked way out there, so it kind of gives you a little perspective how far out on the uh, truss we were. At the end of this solar array, uh, we also got a chance to take an electronics box that, that was mounted on the side of the shuttle payload bay and take it up to a, uh, to a stowage location outside the airlock. As we were doing this outside, uh, from inside, um, uh, the folks began to uh, deploy the solar arrays. And of course, the first side came out uh, great. It looked beautiful. Uh, got a full deploy discrete, and uh, we are all uh, very excited about, um, about bringing P6 back to life. And then as we deployed the second array, we looked out the window and uh, we saw this uh, little number waiting for us. And so this really helped us uh, pull together as a team, and we, uh, the complexity of the second part of our mission changed. Yeah, at that point, we had to throw out the plans to do the other spacewalks and uh, kicked us off into a very intensive planning uh, and construction period where uh, we had to build on orbit the cufflinks, so-called cufflinks, which were used as a load alleviation and uh, took a tremendous amount of effort on the part of the ground and the crews to work together to prepare. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on Flight Day 12 here, it was uh, really the culmination of three days of brilliant work on the ground to get us ready, uh, both uh, with the tools we needed as well as the procedures, uh, robotics and EVA to do this. You can see all of our tools, including our 